Hello, in this episode of To The Point Code, we'll be looking at how to persist data in our Expo React Native app using async storage. To demonstrate this, we'll be using a to-do app that we created. This is the second part of our creating a to-do app series. If you haven't seen the first part already, I'll put the link up here and also in the description below. Now to start with, we need to install async storage. Now let's copy this and paste on our command line. So this is how we are going to use async storage. Every change that we make to our to-do's data, we make sure that we store it in the async storage. Therefore, once we start our app, we need to check whether some data exists in the async storage already. And to make sure that we can check the async storage for any existing data smoothly, we are going to use Expo Uploading. With Expo Uploading, we can keep on showing the splash screen to the user until the async storage has been checked successfully. So we are going to install that once our async storage has installed successfully. So once the two packages have installed successfully, let's head back to the async storage page and copy the imports. Now first of all, let's head to our app.js file. Now let's paste the link. Also, let's import uploading from Expo Uploading. Now we want to create a state variable to monitor the state of our async storage check. We we'll call this variable ready. If our async storage has not been checked successfully, ready will be set to false, otherwise it will be set to true. If ready is set to false, then we keep on showing the splash screen to the user, otherwise we move to the app itself. So for the state, let's import use state from React. Now, async storage works by using key value pairs, meaning if you want to store something using async storage, you have to give it a key. This key will be used whenever we want to access the data that we have stored. So in this case, we want to store our to-dos in async storage and we give it a key of stored to-dos. So in our app component, the first thing we want to do is to check if we have data under the key of stored to-dos in our async storage. If we have data existing, then we'll fetch that data and set that data as the state of our to-dos and no longer the initial to-dos that we set. To make sure that we can do this, we need to make sure that our to-dos are in this app.js file. Currently, our to-do states are in the home component and we need to bring them up a level to the app component. So let's go into the home.js file and copy our state. So now let's cut this and paste in our app.js file. Once we have done that, we need to pass it back to the home component. Once we've done that, let's run our application once again to see that everything works fine. It 
it says that you can't find a variable to do so i guess we didn't take it in so let's go back to our home.js file and take it in yeah that's true we didn't take it in so we take in to do's and set to do's and that should fix it So we see that our app still works correctly. Now let's create a function to load our to-dos from the async storage. We'll do this in the app.js file. We'll call this function load to-dos. Now we'll use the get item method on async storage to check for our data. We said we'll give our data the key of store to do's. This returns a promise. Now we can check if the data is not now. If the data is not now, then we can work with it. Now what you need to notice is that async storage works by storing only strings so even if you are storing an array of objects in async storage you need to stringify it using json and therefore when you are retrieving it you need to pass it again using json so in this case you are going to apply json.pass if you are able to retrieve something from the async storage now because we want to fetch the data and put it in our to-dos we we'll make use of the set to-dos function here So passing the data will bring it back to the array form which we can use. We also need to add a catch block. Now to be able to check for the data in our async storage before our app starts, we are going to use the uploading component. To run the uploading component, we we'll make use of the ready state that we created. So if our app is not ready, then we we'll use the uploading component. This component takes a few properties. First of all, it takes a start async property. This points to a function we should run if our ready state is false. In this case, we will point it to load to do's. It also takes another property unfinished. Now the function that we pass to the unfinished runs whenever the start async function has run successfully. So in our case, we use it to set ready to true. Lastly, if an error occurs, we want to be warned about it. Once we have done that, we can go ahead to get rid of the content of our initial to-dos since we don't need them anymore. Now let's copy this async storage import and move to our home.js file. Also, we don't need this text from React Native so let's clear it. Now in each function that we change the state of our to-dos, we are going to set that change in the async story too. So starting with the handle clear to-dos, once we clear our to-dos, we want to make sure that we've cleared the data in the async story too. To do that, we make use of the method set item on async storage. Remember, we call our item store to-dos. Now we want to use json.stringify.
this also returns a promise. So when we are using the async storage, we want to make sure that the data in the async storage has been updated even before we touch the state of our to-dos. So we will run the async storage first and then pass the set to-dos to it. Meaning this will only run when the async storage has run successfully. Now the next function is the handle add to-do. We also make use of the async storage here. So you can copy these lines of code and paste here. So in the stringify portion, we'll pass our new to-dos. And then after the promise has been returned, we'll pass set to-dos and set modal visible. Now let's move on to the handle edit to do. Once again, we can copy and paste the async storage lines. Now it is still the new to do's so we can maintain it. Now all we need to add is the set to do to be edited. Now let's copy the async storage import again and go to our list items.js file. In this file, we handle the delete operation here, so we need to apply async storage here too. So now in the handle delete to do function, we make use of async storage. We can go back to home.js file and copy our async storage lines. Once we are back here, we can paste it. Once again, the name of our to-dos is new to-dos, so we don't need to change that, but we need to get rid of the set modal visible and maintain the set to-dos new to-dos. So basically, we've made all the changes we need to do and we can test it out. Now let's start by adding a few to-dos. Now we have three new to-dos in our app. Let's see what happens if we refresh the app. Now we see that even after refreshing the app, our new to-dos are still present, which means the async storage is working. Now let's edit and delete some of them and see if the async storage still works. So instead of do my laundry, we will say do my assignment. Let me correct that. Now let's get rid of the prepare my lunch. Once again, let's restart our app. Once again, we see that all our changes are still present. 
So basically that's all for this tutorial. We've been able to use async storage to persist the data of our app, meaning even refreshing the app will not make us lose our data. Now in the next episode, we'll be working on the third part of our to-do series. In that part, we'll be looking at how to add a customized app icon and also a customized splash screen to our project. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you have not done that already. And I'll see you in the next episode.